in order to explore the ratio of circle circumference to diameter, we need to uh, talk about some vocabulary. So first of all, what is a circle? So a circle is the set of all points in a plane equidistant from a given point. Uh, it's important to say in a plane because if we just say the set of all points equidistant from a given point, that's our definition of a sphere. And then that given point is the center. If we were def to define center, we would define it as the point from which all points in a plane are equidistant, which is the circle. So uh, after circle, we would need to know diameter. And that's going to be the distance between two points on a circle passing through the center. That phrase, passing through the center, again, is very important. Otherwise, just a chord. We're not really going to go over that one, but a chord is the distance between any two points on the circle. In fact, when we do define chord, then our definition of diameter is a chord that passes through the center. So that's important that it pass through the center. Next is radius, which is the distance from the center to any point on the circle or really all the points on the circle, right? And circumference. The circumference is the distance around the circle. It's another word for perimeter. It's a word specific to circles, perimeter of a circle. Now, if we go back and we look at diameter and radius, they have a special relationship. I mean, it, as you might be able to see, diameter is um, all the way across the circle, and radius is only halfway. So we could say that a radius is half of the diameter, and we could say the diameter is two times the radius. Oh, that's not what I want. And now we're making our way to a very important concept, something uh, that mathematicians noticed that uh, no matter the size of the circle, there is a special relationship between the distance around the circle and the distance across the circle. And that is no matter how big or small the circle, the circumference divided by the diameter always has the same ratio or the same fraction or the same decimal. And you can try this yourself. You can find any cir anything circular and measure around it and measure it across it. And the more accu accurate you are, the closer and closer you come to 3.14. And for many, many thousands of years, people simply refer to this as the ratio of the circumference to the diameter. Well, you can imagine how annoying that is to have to say that every time you want to refer to this special ratio. And many mathematicians use different symbols in order to refer to it. Um, and then one was pi widely used uh, and popularized through publishing, and that is pi. And so pi is the, circum the ratio of the circumference to the diameter. And it's important to know the definition of ratio, which is simply a comparison of two numbers. Those two numbers in this case being the distance around, divided by or compared to the distance across the circle. So now we're going to do a few problems using circumference, diameter, and radius. And so we need a formula. In fact, we already have the formula. If we look at circumference divided by diameter equals pi, we can rearrange this formula uh, using inverse operations. To undo circumference divided by diameter, we multiply both sides of the equation by the diameter. That's supposed to be a time sign. And multiplying by di diameter on the left undoes the division by diameter. And so what we have is circumference equals pi times diameter. Something else we can do is replace diameter with what diameter equals. And since diameter equals 2r, we can also say the circumference equals pi times 2r. And many times you'll see this written as 2 pi r. The order really doesn't matter. But both of these, um, pi times diameter and pi times 2 times radius, are both used for uh, finding circumference if we know the diameter or the radius. So with this formula, we are going to just use it uh, in order to get some answers. So let's make up a couple of, of problems. Let's say that uh, we want to find the uh, circumference of 
a pond and we know that the diameter is um, 10, uh, let's make it something interesting, 13 feet across. So how much brick would we need to go around that or any kind of whatever liner we're going to put around that? How much liner are we going to need? Well, we start by saying what we're going to use. I always write down the formula generically to make sure that I use it correctly. Circumference equals pi times diameter. And then I start substituting in what I know. Now you could substitute in 3.14, which is what we're going to use in 7th and 8th grade um, for our estimation of pi. But I want to talk to you, well, I'll come back and talk to you about that in a minute. So let's go ahead and put in 3.14 times 13. And remember at this stage, do not use the pi button even if your calculator has one. And when I multiply that, I get 40.82. And we usually go ahead and leave those two decimal places. If it's any more than two decimal places, we usually round to two decimal places. And we still want our units, which is feet. So we're going to need approximately 41 feet of piping or brick or whatever we're going to line that pond with. But our answer is 40.82. Now, that's not our exact answer. And why is it not our exact answer? Well, because we know that pi is not exactly 3.14. In fact, no one can write all the digits of pi because it's an irrational number. It's a decimal that continues forever without repeating in a pattern. So if you're ever asked for the exact answer wherever pi is involved, you would go ahead and simply put in the diameter 13, then use the symbol pi, because now we haven't used a decimal approximation or a fraction approximation, and then put on your units, which is feet. So the exact answer would be 13 pi feet. Now that doesn't give us much of an understanding of how many feet of brick we need, which is why we go ahead with the decimal approximation. Even if you use pi to 10 decimal places, I mean, that's about as accurate as you ever need to be. Um, but the exact answer would be 13 pi feet. So now let's do one with radius. So let's say that uh, a pitcher's mound from the very center to, well, really any point on that circle is 9 feet. So we could figure out the circumference of the pitcher's mound by using our formula. So circumference equals pi times 2r. And again, many people put 2 times pi times r. Either one is fine. So then we start substituting in what we know. We're going to go ahead and use 3.14 for pi. And we have to multiply the radius by 2. And yeah, you could have done that in your head already, but I find that when students do that, they start to make mistakes. Like sometimes they start to do it to diameter, or they'll forget to do it to radius, thinking that they have diameter. The best idea is just to write every single step as you do it. And then, yeah, you could go ahead and write 18 times, or as you put it into your calculator, 3.14 times 18. And that's 56.52. And that would be feet. So the pitcher's mound is approximately 56.52 feet. Now, if we were asked to give the exact answer, of course, going back up here, since radius is 9, our answer would be 18 pi feet. Again, that doesn't give us much of an indication how big a round it is, because we have no idea how big 18 pi feet is. Well, now we know it's around 56 and a half feet. Um, but if you're at, ever asked for the exact answer, you just leave the symbol on it and put your units on it. Now we can use this formula in reverse, meaning maybe we already know the circumference and we want to know the diameter or the radius. So let's say that we know that the circumference is 130 feet. And so we want to know, well, what is the diameter? Well, we still use the formula, and I still write it down generically before I use it, circumference equals pi times diameter, and then I substitute in the values that I know. Well, this time I know the circumference, so I replace C with 130. I'm still going to use the decimal approximation of 3.14 times diameter. Well, how do I solve for a diameter? 
Well, inverse operation, right? We undo this multiplication by dividing both sides by 3.14, and then use our calculator to divide 130 by 3.14, and it comes out to be 41.4012738.9. We're usually going to round to the nearest tenth or hundredth. You just have to look at your, um, your instructions. I do want to talk about, however, if it talks about, this one's I said 41.401. If we're rounding to the nearest hundredth, I actually have to include this zero. This is called a significant digit. If I just put 41.4 because the zero doesn't have any value, obviously, first of all, we want to be careful there about saying it has no value because zero has a value. It's zero. But this shows 10 times more accuracy. Rounding to 41.40 shows that it rounded to that. And to show that I rounded, I can use the approximation symbol. Well, before I do that, I probably want to make sure that I include my units. I always want to include the units. So 41.40 feet is approximately the diameter. But it is 10 times more accurate than 41.4. At least anyone looking at that uh, assumes that if you put 41.4 that you rounded to the nearest tenth, not the nearest hundredth. So that is a significant zero. And then let's do another one where we're finding radius. So let's say that we know that the circumference is 75 feet. Well, if they've asked me for a radius, and back here I guess I could go in and put in the 41.40 feet since I set it up like that. Or I could at least, you know, box this as my answer, just say that's my final answer. So circumference equals pi to r and we place the numbers where we know they go. So 75 will replace C, 3.14 times 2 times radius. Well, I can go ahead and do 3.14 times 2. If you do that on your calculator, you get 6.28. That's just simplifying that side. And now to solve for radius, we divide both sides by 6.28 in order to undo the multiplication. That's inverse operations. And my answer is 11.9426, and it goes on from there. So if I'm going to round to two decimal places, 11.94 feet. Now some people say, well, couldn't you just divide by 3.14 and get the diameter and then divide it by 2? Absolutely you could. But sometimes I forget to continue to divide by two. You know, am I looking for radius or diameter? You just need to make sure that you answer the question. And that's circumference, radius, diameter, and pi.